So it's been a really busy couple of months with wedding photography and I haven't really managed to get out that much to do much landscape photography. So what I thought I'd do is I'm preparing for a wedding tomorrow and I thought I'd just go through all the gear that I'm going to be taking with me so you can have a quick look. Um, I'll go through my bag and I'll show you all the bits and bobs that I take and what I use them for and also show you some images as well that I've captured with the various pieces of equipment. So before we get started guys, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. We've got lots more coming out in the near future, not just about Fuji gear, but landscape photography and wedding photography and pretty much everything photography related. So if you haven't done so guys, consider subscribing and hit the bell notification button and you'll be notified next time I make an upload. That being said, let's get into this. So first things first, I've got my bag, which I'm going to put up there for now. Hopefully that's not going to be in the way too much. But yeah, the bag, um, I've had this bag for three years. It's the longest time I've ever had a camera bag for. Um, I went through various different types of bags before I bought this. And uh, this is probably it's the best bag I've ever owned for wedding photography, without a shadow of a doubt. It's the Think Tank Airport Navigator. So it's a roller case. Um, as you can see, it's got the, the wheels here, uh, which is great, and the handle extends at the back. It's fantastic, it really, really is. It gets all of my gear in pretty much for the whole day. Um, I can carry it on my shoulder, it's not too heavy, so it's an absolutely brilliant bag. So it's getting a little worn now, um, some, of the, some of the materials coming off the uh, strap there. But, you know, it's been to over 100 weddings now, so it's, you know, it's still going strong. I'm sure I'll get another couple of years out of it. I might have to get a new strap, but... So what, you know, um, it's not a cheap bag, um, around about 250 pounds, but you know, it's very, very durable. It's gonna last up to the ages. So, you know, no problems there. So let's delve inside. Front panel just flips down and then I've got access to all of my gear at the front here, which is super awesome. Everything's really easy to get to. I'll just open the top panel and then you can get straight at both cameras from the top there. So I'll have my uh, 5140 Fuji lens on one camera and my 23 1.4 on the other. So if I've not got my straps on, I can just access the camera straight out the top of the bag. So just pull it out and I'm ready to shoot. So that's really, really good. So let me just quickly go through uh, the cameras that I take. Um, I've got two Fuji X-T2s. Uh, one's filming on the camera right now, the other one's here in the bag. No reliability issues whatsoever. Um, I've shot a lot of images on them this year as well. So they're doing really, really well. Obviously two bodies, got the leather case on this one. On the other one, I've got the battery grip. Currently on this camera is the 18 to 55 kit lens. I don't use it too much at weddings, um, but I've got it really for backup while I'm shooting. So it just stays in the bag in case anything happens to my 23mm 1.4 I've got just a backup so that just sits in the bag normally and the 23 which is filming right now is normally on this. Now the 23 1.4 lens I, I, I could shoot a whole wedding on that lens it's a fantastic lens it really is and you know it's a very very shallow depth of field normally I don't shoot a 1.4 I'm normally 1.8 or 2 just to help me with focus and that type of thing. But if I do need that extra bit of light, I can go down to 1.4 and it will obviously help me keep my ISO down. So yeah, I could shoot a whole wedding pretty much on this lens, but obviously I don't. I like to be creative and I like to use other lenses as well. Um, so let me just run through the other lenses that I've got. So in here, I've got the 5140. Now I shoot with two bodies and I've got a dual harness here leather harness which is awesome similar to the hold fast harnesses that you can get but this was made bespoke um, so i've got two bodies on um, always have the 50 140 on one body and the 23 1.4 on the other and that pretty much gets me all the focal range i need to shoot a wedding so this obviously gets me close in and lets me be able to capture some more intimate shots during the service and the speeches. So like when they're putting the rings on, just some close in detail shots, obviously shots of um, them looking at each other. And also during like the portrait sessions and that type of thing, I can get in nice and close and get a really, really nice shallow depth of field and get some really nice bokeh in the background. So excellent lens. Maybe I'll come back from a wedding and I'll probably have maybe 200 images shot with this lens. I've got the uh, 10 to 24 uh, F4 lens. 
Now I use this for shooting interiors mainly. Um, it's really, really good for if you wanna maybe get some detail shots of the room, the, uh, the reception room before the, the bride and groom and all the guests go in. It's nice to get a wide shot and this is uh, really good for that. And it also, because you can focus quite closely, it, you can get a different um, perspective on some detail shots. So, you know, you can maybe get in really close and shoot really wide just to get a bit of a different kind of take on some, some of the more standard kind of detail shots. So that's really cool. Um, I've also got in here the 18mm f2 lens. Now, there's a lot said about this lens. It's, it's noisy, the autofocus isn't that great. Um, but it's small, it's tiny, you know, you take the hood off it and, you know, it is so small. So um, this comes into its own later on during the dancing. Um, if you've been shooting a wedding and you've started at 8, 9 o'clock in the morning and you've got to sort of 9 o'clock in the evening and you're feeling pretty tired, this doesn't weigh anything, you know, it really doesn't. You don't notice it's on the camera at all. So, and it's nice and wide. So I use this quite a lot for dancing. So I'll have the 23 on one camera and I'll have the 18 F2 on the other. So I can get in a little bit closer with the 23 and then get the wide shots with the 18 mil. And it works really, really nice. And this is really good for just like kind of wandering around the dance floor and getting real close in shots of people just going crazy. Um, sometimes I'll manually focus if autofocus is struggling, other times I won't need to, but that all depends on the light obviously. So that is the lenses taken care of. So let's just talk about the flash. I've got these Nissan speed lights. They are the i60As and they're pretty good. Um, they're, they're not bad at all, we've got two of them. I don't use flash that much, um, generally using ambient light, but obviously when we get to the dance floor or if it's particularly dark during the speeches then I'll use them. Um, generally I'll be bouncing the flash off the ceiling during the speeches. I don't know how to fire it straight into people's faces. I've also got a wireless trigger there for some creative dance floor shots if we need to. Um, so yeah, really, really pleased with these. They're very, very small compared to my old ones I had for my full frame Nikon cameras. They do everything I need to. You don't need an extra trigger on them. This air system, you know, obviously sits on top of the hot shoe and just remotely fires them. So overall, I've been pretty pleased. I would say the dials on them are a little bit flimsy, you know, um, but I've had them for over a year now and I've had no problems with them whatsoever. So they work really, really well. Pleased with them. Uh, just a few of the little accessories. So you've got the Giotto's uh, air blower, which is pretty standard. I've got this Meek or Meeky or Mike, however you want to say it, um, macro extension tube. So I don't use them that much, but if the couple want a close detail shot of the rings together, I'll use this. I'll put it on the 5140 and I can get in really, really close and just grab a nice close in shot of the rings. Um, probably some of the jewelry maybe I might use them for, but I don't use them that often, but they're there if I need to. Um, in here, all important list of the day, times, um, obviously group shots, locations, all of that list, massively important. Um, in here, I've got my 15 inch HP MV laptop, really nice laptop. I don't always take it, but if I'm thinking that there might be a period of time where, um, you know, I've got a bit of bit of spare time during the wedding day, maybe when the guests are eating or if they plan to go back to their rooms for a while, then I can maybe get some editing done, check my emails, that type of thing. So sometimes I take it, sometimes I don't. I've got the Peli case for my SD cards. Keep your SD cards nice and safe in there. Brilliant. Once I've, uh, once I've uploaded my images to my computer, flip the card around, put it back in, and I know that the data is then on the computer. So that is cool. Um, Lens hood for the 5140. So in the top panel here, I've just got a whole bunch of memory cards. This side here, I put my empty memory card cases, some lens cloths, lens caps go in there as well once I've taken them off so I know where they are. Um, in this side here, I've got spare batteries if I need to use them there inside there. When they're, <laughs> when they're fully charged, they're in this side. When they're flat, they go in the other side. Also, I take these Allen Crom umbrellas if I need to use off-camera flash, say if the weather's terrible and we have to do the group shots inside. 
I can set flashlights on some stands and shoot through these umbrellas just to give a, a nice, a softer light. If I can't bounce flash anywhere, then I'll use them. They will stay in the car. I've also got two light stands I take with me as well, just in case, again, I need to use off-camera flash or something, but they generally stay in the car as well. I've also got this uh, Young Nuo LED light, which is a really nice light. It's what's lighting me now. Um, folds down really nice and compact, and I take that with me. In case I can't bounce flash, so during the speeches, you know, if the ceilings are dark or something like that, and I can't bounce flash, I, you know, if it's very, very dark, I can use the LED light just to light the couple up. Works quite well for sparkler shots as well if it's dark outside and obviously we've got a whole bunch of people standing there with sparklers. Sometimes it's quite difficult to get focus so you can put it on top of the camera. Um, that will just light the sort of couple up as they're walking through. That works really well. So yeah, use it occasionally. But again, that stays in the car and is there in case I need it. There is another bag somewhere. Oh, here we go. So this is a smaller bag and it stays in the car for the majority of the time. Uh, and in here, we've just got um, a bunch of cards actually. You know, I hand these out. This tells everybody how to view the photographs on the, on the gallery. So give one to every single guest. Not only can they view the photographs, obviously they will see my website and hopefully like the photographs I take and recommend me. So that's really good. Again, this all stays in the car. I've got various leads and chargers for all the gear. So yeah, that's pretty straightforward really. Some spare batteries as well if I need them. So that pretty much is all the gear I take. So, you know, I go to lots of locations during the day. Sometimes it's four different locations. And I like to, I've, I've kind of honed my equipment down so it's nice and portable, you know. I don't want to be running backwards and forwards to the car, getting gear out, putting gear away. I want to have all the gear on me so I don't miss anything, you know, because uh, the last thing you want to do is miss something. And, you know, this has served me really, really well over the last 18 months. Fuji cameras have been great. Um, I know there's been reported problems with um, the X-H1, but the, XH, uh, the X-T2 has done me proud, to be honest. I'm really, really pleased with it. Uh, no problems at all. I've got two bodies anyway in case one goes, <laughs> goes wrong or something. So yeah, you know, all these little fail safes we've got to take into consideration when we're putting our kit together. And, and this has really done me proud over the course of the last 18 months. So guys, thank you so much for watching today. Really, really appreciate it. If you've got any questions, drop them down below, guys. In the future, I'm planning to do some videos related to the comments. So I'll be picking some of the comments out and, and doing a specific video about that comment. So if you've got anything you want to chat about, you know, drop it below, guys. Really appreciate that. So thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing. I've got loads more coming out in the near future. We're off to Snowdonia, hopefully next week, and then on to Pembrokeshire, possibly the following week. I'm not 100% sure. But yes, we will be getting back out in the landscape and doing some landscape photography vlogs. So stay tuned for that, guys. Okay, see you soon. Yeah.